Oh, I think we may have actually started. Good lord. Look at this. Look at this technology. Actually getting a stream to work. Now the big test is going to be to see whether I can actually, well, whether people are going to be seeing this at the same time. So I'm just going to notify someone of it. And I do hope you're all well. Uh, but yeah, uh, I will get on and uh, start doing some character creation as soon as someone comments to say that they can see and hear me. Uh, because as soon as you do, uh, thank you, Floor Suck. You can see me, but can you hear me? I'm guessing so by the fact that you've answered. But you know, we'll just check. Because checking is always, you know, it's a sensible thing to do. Uh, but yeah. Uh, it's obviously around midday in the UK. Excellent, you can hear me, you can see me, wonderful. Hello Floorsight, hello Thomas Perry, hello Jane Mitchell. It is fantastic that people can actually see me. Uh, I've obviously used this setup on Twitch before. I've never used it for YouTube. Uh, but it's it's wonderful to be here. It's uh, good to actually be able to stream something to YouTube. I used to do character creation uh, videos like this on my YouTube channel some time ago with screen sharing, which was always a bit of a tricky prospect because if the ratios on your monitors were wrong, it would make the PDF tiny or suddenly shoot off into the distance that kind of thing that was always a bit of a pain but i think we've got it all set up and as you can see we are creating a v20 uh well v, uh, i'll gesture with that arm instead uh we are creating a v20 character and uh, this is at the request of one of my Patreons, a uh, lovely chap by the name of Lucas, and he has requested a character to be made for him for Vampire the Masquerade. And so we're making a character for Vampire the Masquerade 20th Anniversary Edition rather than V5. Um, now, we may do a V5 character creation video at some other point. If someone requests that, we can do character creation for all kinds of games. Uh, I mean, ideally, it will be one where we have a digital character sheet so that I can actually take you through the process of it. Hopefully the sound of my thundering on uh, my keyboard won't be too oppressive when I start actually creating said character. But, you know, we will we'll give it our best shot. So, uh, first things first. Before we get started with character creation, something I just need to point people out uh, toward is one... There's my Patreon. You can back it. You can have characters created. You can request videos on specific topics, whether it's on certain elements of Vampire the Masquerade mythology, a review of a certain role-playing game, or in-depth, I guess, uh, deep dive, you might call it. Uh, two, uh, I've got MatthewDawkins.com. On MatthewDawkins.com, you can see all of my listed credits. I've need to update the website admittedly but you can see all the things i've worked on but you can also buy me a cup of tea which is a lovely thing to do uh, and cups of tea can cost as much or as little as you like but there's a button on there that lets you just tip me it's like a kofi coffee thing uh, it's always appreciated you know because writing ro role playing games doesn't always quite pay the bills Last thing, and this is the most exciting thing after all the begging, is Mage the Ascension 20th Anniversary Edition had a Victorian era Kickstarter or Indiegogo campaign of crowdfunding a month or so ago. And we at Onyx Path are trying something a little different with that one in that after the Indiegogo campaign has completed, we are still allowing people to back on Backer Kit, which is like the follow-up to the campaign. That's normal. But the funding that is added at the Backer Kit level will go toward future stretch goals. So typically when we do crowdfunding, the stretch goal cutoff is when the Kickstarter or Indiegogo campaign concludes. If you haven't hit a stretch goal by the time that ends, that's it. It's done. But with Victorian Mage, we are running it for a couple of months 
to see whether we can maintain interest in the back get the pre-order service and if so you can still continue to fund additional stretch goals and additional books and such and so far that's going really well i've linked the m20 victorian age campaign in the description below which means if you haven't backed that game yet and victorian era is perfect for mage the ascension please do check it out and give us your support so before we go on nope uh, i think that's everything so let's have a look at the character we have to make uh, we've been requested by a chap by the name of lucas to make a character also by the name of lucas funny that and we've been given some basic details about this character. This is going to be a collaborative effort. I want people who are watching this to give me their input in what, how we think we should apportion this person's traits, how we should assign clan, disciplines, things like that. This is very much collaborative. And hello, Law by Night. Always lovely to see you. Now, Lucas has specified a few things, and this is always very important to me when I'm creating a character for Vampire the Masquerade. I like to think of who the mortal was before they were a vampire. Who were they? Because that should inform an awful lot of the character you're playing, more so than how many dots I put in a given discipline, or what my humanity rating might be, or what path of enlightenment I'm on, that kind of thing. I like to play around with the human side first. Because vampires are ultimately mortals who have been cursed into immortality. And I think that makes for an interesting way of examining a vampire character. It means you actually start thinking of things like family, employment, obligations, tragedy. V5 leans a lot into this, but we're going to be taking this and putting it into V20. So, we have... Uh, our character by the name of Lucas. He is a male. Uh, he is in his mid-thirties. He lives in Poland. Uh, he, he lives in the medium-sized city of Bialystok, uh, which means White Stream in English. He has a family. Uh, his wife is a librarian. They have a four-year-old daughter called Sophie. Both parents alive and well. He has a brother who is a prison guard. Keep all of these things in mind. We are keeping in mind that he has a family, he has obligations, his wife is employed, he has a young child. He is an Orthodox Christian. Let's keep that in mind as well, because it might inform the kind of vampire that embraced him, and his motivation, the way his traits are assigned, once we start apportioning skills, attributes, and such. He loves water, swimming, sailing, diving, canoeing. He's a sportsman. In terms of employment, Lucas is a truck driver. He drives a garbage truck, in fact, and he really enjoys his job. So let's not assume that because this is his employment, he loathes it. He really enjoys helping his community. And so we can picture Lucas in our head. Mid-30s, white, male, married. Got a kid, got a job he enjoys. He's an Orthodox Christian and a believer at that. Uh, he has a brother who works as a prison guard. He seems pretty satisfied. He's a bit sportsman-like as well. So we can kind of, again, appreciate where dots are going to go in terms of his abilities. So let's start filling in the character sheet. Uh, so again, I apologise if any of this is particularly thunderous as I'm typing it. I'll try and type lightly. Uh, so we have Lucas here. And let's think, first of all, uh, let's hope that the information actually filters through to the PDF that you can see on the screen. It appears so wonderful. So let's look at nature and demeanor first, because nature and demeanor are a very important part of character creation, and they're something that not a lot of people get. Uh, we have, for instance, the fact that nature is someone's 
in in our drive their personal motivation they may not share it with everyone it is something that they feel very deeply about or may even not be aware of it could be their id something that is driving them under the surface and we also have the demeanor demeanor is the way they carry themselves the way they comport themselves sometimes nature and demeanor are the same but more likely in the game of vampire the masquerade which is all about subterfuge and erecting barriers between yourself and the world outside nature and demeanor differ so we can start with demeanor these things impact the regain of willpower points during the course of the game when you play out your nature uh, you gain willpower or when you achieve something that matches your nature i tend to tinker with that a little when i run vampire the masquerade essentially i say that you gain a willpower point just one uh, if you act in accordance with your demeanor at the end of the session you'll gain one willpower point if you have achieved your nature's drive without anyone being able to tell that you have or being able to make it highlighted that you are acting out of character for yourself you gain all of your willpower points back that's how i tend to do it so as a demeanor we have a lot of options uh, and we always do in Vampire the Masquerade, this particular character sheet from Mr. Gon's website, I always recommend checking it out for an amazing array of character sheets, uh, has a huge list of natures and demeanours. And based on the way our character was described as a mortal, I'm tempted between traditionalist, because he's a religious man, and also he maintains a family, he probably has a set routine, he has gainful employment, so traditionalist sounds about right. And of course caregiver may work as well, because he has a child, he is supporting his family, his wife. There was nothing in that description that made me feel like he is going to act in a particularly criminal or unusual manner. So, by all means, uh, if people have ideas here, they should add them to the chat because we're going to be customising this character as a collaborative exercise. Uh, but for the time being, I think his demeanour should be that he is a... Uh, I'm going to go for a traditionalist because I think it's more, more interesting than caregiver. But that means we now have nature, and this is where we can start adding things like the character's dark side, maybe, or his inner turmoil, something about him that he doesn't share with the people he loves and the people with whom he works. So let's have a think. What could this guy, who for all intents and purposes looks like the ideal family man, he's married, got a kid, gainful employment, He's a sports, sporty person, he's a religious person, everything seems on the up and up. So, how can we play around with that with his nature? Let's give him something a little... a little darker, maybe. Or, not necessarily like a horrible secret, but a horrible ambition, or a, a way in which he is maybe overly competitive. Uh, Richard Allen suggests something, <laughs> something perverted in the chat uh we also have a sociopath for blending in so chameleon could work or sociopath as you say uh so you could have a dexter kind of a character here you could have something like oh let's see a perfectionist maybe he is so dedicated to his community that he's a sort of um he he hate he's so dedicated to the picking up of trash that he absolutely hates to see waste. He hates to see mess. Everything has to be in perfect order, and his family are terrified of him. Uh, capitalist, I don't think would work given his profession, and that's not to demean the uh, refuse collecting profession, but it isn't exactly the kind of thing that I would associate with the average capitalist. In fact, he seems more dedicated to society so more of a socialist penitent hmm a church hierarchy climber that could be interesting maybe he's trying to make up for something that he did that's always fun let's go for penitent i like that idea of anslow if we go for a penitent it tells us that lucas is is scared of something that he's done something he feels guilty for having done it so penitent but he appears as a traditionalist. He's trying to make up for it. Uh, so we're going to write his co concept in is family man with a dark secret. 
a stepfather, if you will. My, one of my favourite uh, villains in They Came From Camp Murder Lake, eminently written by the lady gamer who has just joined us in chat. Hello there, my uh, female counterpart. So, we've got um, lots of people, true mate, blind idiot god, are saying, Sadist! Sadist! Make him a sadist! <laughs> Uh, so we have here from uh, Dale Spame. Uh, oh, I can totally depict that in a game. God loves us all equally, yet be assured that I've done more and did it better than you. <laughs> yeah. Does he have a basement? Uh, well, we will have to see. Now, I tend to do clan last. Uh, sometimes when I run Vampire the Masquerade, I am a bit of a shit as a keeper. Keeper? God, that's called Cthulhu. As a storyteller, because I will assign clans to people. Because I actually see clans... I've been playing Vampire the Masquerade for long enough now where I don't go straight in to create a character with a clan in mind. I like to think of the character first, the clan second. And that isn't to say one way is better than the other. A lot of people are attracted to playing Vampire because of the clans. One could even argue it's fundamental to Vampire the Masquerade's popularity. But for me, I like to create the bones of the character before I stick the meat of the clan on top. So we'll get to the clan shortly. For the time being, his generation will be 13th, because that's the default in Vampire the Masquerade. So now we look at attributes. We've got physical, social, mental. So far we know he's a sporty uh, garbage collector, has a family, seems friendly, he's pious. I'm very tempted to put physical first. And social or mental second, I'm not sure. Let's ask the viewers. Physical, I think, makes sense because he loves his whitewater rafting, his canoeing, his yachting, and that kind of thing. And you have to have a certain amount of physical strength to flourish in his profession. So physical primary makes perfect sense. Blind Idiot God suggests social, physical, mental as the order, which could turn the concept on its head a little. You know, he doesn't have to be the best sports person. We have Zeus the Soulless Ginger saying social second. And we've got Jane Mitchell saying mental, then social. We've got Floor Suck saying social before mental. Everyone is coming in with different opinions right now, but no one is justifying it. Nertai is saying social. I'd say he's an extrovert. The Lady Gamer says social. True Mate is saying physical, social, mental. Right now, social is certainly trumping mental. So let's go for physical, social, mental. So... The split of dots in V20 is 753. You will start with an automatic one dot in each attribute, and then you go seven on top of the one dot, five on top of another, three on top of another. You can spread them around as you see fit. So we'll start with physical. I think strength makes sense. Strength and stamina, Richard Allen, yeah, I think you're quite right. So let's go for at least two of those. Oh, yeah, this is fun. <laughs> and the dots keep blinking off. There we go. Uh, so I've spent four of my seven in physical. Uh, I think I will only put two in dexterity. Actually, you know what? If you're a canoeist, I imagine you have to be pretty damn rapid so right now we can say six dots spread evenly across physical that's a fairly typical setup for someone who's physical primary and where should we put our seventh dot stamina or strength i think i'm actually i'm thinking strength i'm going to go for strength this time so now we get to social where we have five five dots and this is interesting because when i was first picturing the character i wasn't necessarily considering him manipulative or charismatic or even stunning looks or anything like that so let's think if social is a secondary how are we going to spread five dots because five dots is quite a lot you know it's not just saying three boom 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 down so where is he getting the majority of these 
Oh, a lot of people are saying he needs at least four stamina for canoeing and rafting, so we may have to come back to this when we get our freebie points. Lady Gamer says that he's a charismatic man. Maybe that is how he attracted his wife and is known as a uh, lovable member of the community. If he has a dark secret, says Tarenja DA, manipulation should probably be higher. You may be true. Maybe right there. Maybe right. Manipulation is a very appealing option. Hmm. So, no one is saying appearance should be high, which frankly speaks to me of people who have played Vampire the Masquerade before and realised that appearance rarely comes into play <laughs> and is why it isn't a trait in Chronicles of Darkness or V5. Lady Game says he has a very handsome moustache. So, manipulation might be a focus, as Richard Allen, who has clearly had bad interactions with the religious before. Nertai comes out with an interesting prospect here. Leave manipulation at one. He's an honest and straightforward man. Now, I, I really like that idea, except we've already established that he has a dark secret, and if he can't keep that dark secret through some manipulation, I think his concept is going to fall flat quite quickly. So, I love the idea, and I love the idea of playing with a character who has a fundamentally weak stat somewhere. Uh, it makes for a challenge, and when you're role-playing a character, it shouldn't always be about how you're going to succeed at everything, but also how you're going to fail. So, let's think. We've got five dots to spend. We've spent one in appearance, so if we put another one and two in manipulation, two more to spend. So, uh, there's a getaway car outside right now, it sounds like. And I think we will go for... I think manipulation makes sense. Makes sense. I'm tempted to put manipulation up to four points. Charisma would be one if he's constantly trying to hide something from the community he primarily interacts with. I would agree AP Frenchy, except we've also established that he is able to keep his wife and child happy and seems to be a gregarious sportsman involved in sports involving other people. So, mm, let's see. Manipulation highest, keep a secret. Charisma second, because he's a family man. Uh, so, all right. Well, it's a pretty even spread here. So right now I'm going to go for 3-3-2. Three, three, three in Charisma, 3 in Manipulation, 2 in Appearance. But we might change this. Then we get to Mental. This is a nice easy one. It's three dots to spread among the Mental Attributes. Uh, do we want any of them to be particularly low? That is the... That is the question, because just as I was talking about earlier, we can, of course, hamstring one of these traits, leave it at one, and that means we get to spend two in one of the other mental traits. The challenge of role-playing a character like this is uh, whenever you set a mental attribute to one, it can really act as a detriment to play, because very few people like to play characters who are, quite frankly limited in what they can work out, how they can communicate, that kind of thing. It's something I think a lot of people don't consider when they're building their characters, especially when they're building fighters, let's say. They'll put everything into their physical attributes. They will really curtail their mental ones and their social ones because they'll think, I won't need them. And then they'll find that the role-playing experience really leaves them hanging because they're not getting a chance to say anything and they're not getting a chance to solve any mysteries. All they are there to do is punch people. So let's see what we have got here. Tyranger DA says mental can be fairly well-rounded. Jane Mitchell says, Perception of the world could be completely off what the world is. And Professor Lardy says, Leave perception low, and it actually turns out there were witnesses to his dark secret he wasn't aware of. Richard Allen says, If he's a little bit shallow, he might be very witty to make up for his lack of smarts. Vanslow says he should have two in everything mental, because he's able to keep his secret so far. Wits for great dad jokes, says Trumate. 
Playing with Wits 2, Perception 2 is already pretty painful, <laughs> says AP Frenchy. If he is keeping his secret well, he should have two points in each, says Law by Night. I'm tempted to agree. I don't necessarily want to create an incredibly well-rounded character uh, because they can be quite dull. So I think I'm going to go with what Nurtai is saying here. Wits high to, because he needs to be able to lie convincingly. So I'm going to put two in wits, and I'm going to put one in intelligence, where he lacks is perception. Now this could be a physical perception, maybe he always has to wear glasses, maybe he really can't see very well, maybe the all the time working on the back of that heavy garbage truck has completely blown his hearing, or maybe he is just so blinkered to the world that he doesn't see things around him. We already know he is religious, maybe he is fundamentally religious, and that has prevented him from being able to understand lots of other things. So let's leave perception as one, intelligence two, wits three. So now we have his abilities, which is a split of 13, 9, and 5. So 13 will go in talent, skills, or knowledges, 9 will go in talent, skills, or knowledges, and 5 will go in talent, skills, or knowledges. And we get to choose where we put them. Uh, we will get to do a strength specialization, AP Frenchy, but I do specializations at the end. So, <laughs> uh, so let's see what makes sense. Rather than dividing the 1395 immediately, let's have a look at the kind of things we already know he's good at. We already know he's an athlete. It's his primary hobby. I'm prepared to put three dots in athletics immediately. We already know he's probably not very alert or aware based on his low perception. And I don't feel the need to compensate for that. Characters should have some area where they need other people to step in. This is one of the reasons vampire coteries get together. Because no one is perfect to everything. And where you sh fall short, you find a friend and they help fill that gap. Not physically. Well, not necessarily. Subterfuge likewise makes a lot of sense. I like to put these things about three dots if I know that I'm going to be using them a lot. And given that he is a practice liar, three dots in subterfuge makes a lot of sense. Drive and etiquette is pretty important given his background. I agree. Uh, although I wouldn't put drive much higher than two. Uh, then again, he is craft. He is piloting lots of watercraft. So yeah, okay, I like that. Etiquette, however, I'm going to go for. It's an interesting one actually because he should have etiquette because he's got this religious background. He is fully familiar with the way to conduct oneself in the church. He seems to have a loving family, and he probably meets a lot of people on his garbage route and isn't known as a rude customer. So, all right, we'll put three dots in etiquette. We can always shave it down a little more. Survival because of outdoor sports. Melee with specialization in oars. I think that might be pushing it a little, Nurtai. Uh, we haven't established yet that he kills people with oars, or boat hooks for that matter. But survival does make sense. Now, I'm putting three in each of these, not because I necessarily want to keep them at three, but because... I want to know where I'll be focusing, and then I can narrow them down if I want to spread the points a little more thinly elsewhere. Empathy for man of the people, or man of the community, says uh, says Floor Suck. I... yeah, okay, okay. One expression, a great character in the community. Yeah, we know he's witty, we know he's witty, so he can tell a quick joke. Again, I'm putting the points like this, we will be shaving them down. So far, in terms of knowledges, he it has not gained anything, and that's a bit troubling. I guess we could say that as he's a pious, orthodox Christian, he could have some dots in occult, but I don't think he needs any more than two. In Dark Ages, he would have theology, but that's not a trait in this edition. Animal Ken 1, got to keep those raccoons out of the garbage cans. That's a really good idea. I don't know how many raccoons there are in Poland, but uh, I'm sure there are lots of uh, pests and wild animals. Lady Gamer, you recently played uh, Heart of the Forest, which is set in Poland. Maybe you could enlighten us as to the animals, the flora and fauna that attacks garbage collectors. 
Larceny because he steals money from the church. Lawful faith. That is a fantastic idea and may tie into why he is a penitent. Why it's a dark secret. Maybe he's a kleptomaniac. Maybe he steals. He can't help but steal because his his job doesn't pay him well enough to support a wife and a child. And his wife's a librarian. Librarians don't get paid much either. I'm liking this. I am liking this a lot. Academics for his religion and sports. Yeah, let's put that up as well. Technology, maybe. Garbage trucks are mechanised these days. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Medicine. His family doesn't need a doctor. He knows how to put that broken arm back in place. Hmm. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Low perception would be bad for canoeing. Maybe he's not a very good canoeist. <laughs> One in finance does the family finances. All right. He's probably political in a shallow way. Maybe, maybe. If he's a klepto, maybe a point in finance. Okay, right. We've already uh, spread a lot of points around. We've probably gone over the limit on a lot of these. So let's see what we've spent. So in skills, we have added 4, 7, 10, 13. Well, in that case, we could quite safely say that these 13... Well, skills is where he has his 13 traits. Brilliant. So now we need to know where he's going to have his 9 and where he's going to have his 5. Currently, he has 12 spread across his talents. Currently, he has 3, 7, 10 spread across his knowledges. So it makes most sense to me to narrow down... Let's see what happens if we cut down his expression. He's not that witty. His empathy, he's not that empathetic. And... I'm going to cut his medicine down. He's not a trained nurse. He just knows some basic first aid. And his occult, just because he's a believer in his orthodox Christianity, doesn't mean he's necessarily a practitioner of it. Uh, so this cuts us down a little. If I knock his empathy down, he now has nine across his talents. So, this leaves five for knowledges, and this is where he's really going to start suffering. We have some excellent ideas for why his knowledges would be high. I think academics, I'd really like to leave academics at two. This is his theology from a, I guess, study perspective. He doesn't know the rituals, he can't make any magic happen, but he has two in academics. I'm happy to leave that there. But we can only spend five on these. So... One, two, we'll put one. We don't need him to be in charge of the family finances. So, one, two, one in medicine. I like that he has basic first aid. Uh, we can add well, one to occult, one to politics. Let's leave one out of politics. Yeah. One, two, three, four. All right, we're going to take the one out of occult because his academics fill in for his religion. There we go. All right, then. So now we're going to start looking at virtues. That means we're jumping ahead to a different stage than is usually presented in character creation, but that's because we're making a mortal first. Uh, you've probably noticed we haven't discussed clan or disciplines or vampirism at all at this point. So let's look at virtues. We're going to assume that he is based around conscience, self-control, and courage to make him the average starting character. So... Conscience, self-control, and courage. I think because he's a penitent, he must have a high conscience. We get to spend seven dots here. So I'm going to put three in conscience to bump that up to four. Self-control, likewise. One, two, three, four, five, six. So one in courage. Yeah. Because we also know that he's a thief and a liar. So he's probably not very brave. So I think that actually makes a lot of sense. Four in conscience, he feels guilt. Four in self-control, but he doesn't tell anyone. Two in courage, he is also harbouring a horrible dark secret. Um, which I think is probably going to be a little worse than he's been stealing money from the collection plate. So right now, that means that when he is created as a vampire, his humanity is going to start on a an impressive eight. That's good. It doesn't mean he'll stay there. His willpower, on the other hand, is going to start at a lowly 2. 
thankfully we will have freebie points we can bump some of these up if we feel the need so i don't do backgrounds typically at this point but let's let's do it anyway so let's look at his mortal connections his mortal resources and so on we've got a lot of options for backgrounds black hand membership is not going to be one of them <laughs> Things like allies, alternate identity, that could be interesting given that he's got a lie that he's trying to maintain. Contacts, other mortal things, influence in the community, resources. He probably has a small amount of wealth. We know he has a um, house. Oh yeah, I'm not suggesting AP Frenchy that he's going to maintain that eight humanity for long. It's just equal to his conscience and self-control. He's a very guilty thief. Maybe he's not a very good one. So let's start with the obvious. So when we spend our five dots on backgrounds, I think he is going to have allies in the form of his wife and brother. His wife is at the library. We'll put his wife as a contact, actually, because a library contact is actually quite useful. And allies is his brother who works in the prison service. Uh, in terms of his... I don't think he's famous, but he probably has influence in the local community as he is known as a community member. So that's one dot in influence. Makes sense to me. Resources is where I think he's really going to be loaded up a little. Bear in mind that this is only five dots at first. Almost everyone dumps freebie points into backgrounds, and that's what we'll probably be doing as well, maybe, unless he's just a brand new fledgling. I want to put two dots in resources. One is for his legitimate income. Two is for the income that he has been stealing. Maybe he isn't just robbing the church. So now we have our character at a mortal level. We still need to know who he is as a vampire. And so this is where fans of Vampire the Masquerade will get involved. Which clan embraced Lucas? Let's think. Why would a vampire be attracted to make a child out of this garbage-collecting canoeist with a family and a brother in the prison service who believes in Orthodox Christianity? Professor Lardy says a Torridor, or maybe a Nosferatu, embraced him to spite the Torridor. AP Frenchy does feel like we should get more background dots by default, but they should cost two freebies. I agree. As I say, almost everyone puts freebie points in backgrounds, but I also think if you think of a character from a mortal standpoint at the very beginning, five backgrounds pretty much covers it. Law by Night says if he's passionate for sports, a Torridor would be an interesting choice. James Ellsbury, which faction is in control in Poland? Uh, so in that sort of V20 era, there's a lot of Nosferatu. Of course, the Zimishi are quite uh, resplendent across the Balkans and Eastern Europe. I know Poland isn't in the Balkans, but in that uh, Central Eastern Europe area. Um, Gangrel are quite prevalent in that part of the world as well. There's some Bruja, most of them are ex-Soviets, uh, so they're still quite fervent communists. They were embraced during the time of communism at its peak, and even though the curtain has fallen and communism has crashed and burned, they would still be around. Uh, we do know that he has aquatic interests that would make him a La Sombra candidate. I really don't like that connection. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen the appeal of La Sombra Pirates or playing a pirate vampire game. It really doesn't feel like Vampire the Masquerade to me, but that's me, uh, my elitist throne. Our V says La Sombra for the church connections. That makes sense, but he isn't a priest. The La Sombra like to embrace people who either are destined to fail so they can bring them up or who are already in positions of power, such as priests. And right now he is an adherent of orthodox christianity but he isn't the kind of person that's going to be going around spreading the good word and manipulating other churchgoers necessarily a uh, gangrel accidental happened after kayaking in the outdoors says true mate that's actually a really good idea malkavian sees visions of his god chastising him for his theft very good rory henry osborne says kaitiff kaitiff 16th generation Jane Mitchell says Ventral Bruja. lots of different ideas i'm basically getting every single clan thrown at me the Lady Gamer says, I vote Ventru. Lucas is a traditionalist, and a Ventru vampire would see potential in him rising from the ranks. 
not a bad idea. Ventru do enjoy vampires who have some kind of connection to the community and mortals because it gives them influence. So, hmm, getting lots and lots of interesting ideas at this point. So, I'm going to say... Ooh, oh, I'm t it, it's tricky, it's tricky. We're getting so many different excellent suggestions right now. He's also savvy with cash, that is right, Jane. So, Ventru would work. Malkavian would be interesting to play on as secret and paranoid, but I think he can be secretive and paranoid without being a Malkavian. Gangrel preying on him while he prays from his canoe in the still water. Maybe he heard his prayers and wants him to let loose a bit, says blind idiot God. That would be a nasty Gangrel, wouldn't it? Alright, I'm just going to quickly scroll up and see which clan is getting the most votes here. So I'm going to do a quick tally. Uh, we have a couple of uh, nominations for Toriador. Uh, we have a couple of nominations for La Sombra. Uh, a couple for Gangrel. I'm going to nix the idea of it being a Malkavian because I think his conscience being a burden is already a an aspect of his character. He doesn't need a derangement to emphasise it. Again, a couple of nominations for Ventru. Not really interested in Bruha because he hasn't shown a rebellious streak in his life. Setites, not feeling it for this guy, really. Uh, so Nosferatu are sneaking up from the background here, as they do. Lots of people now saying Gangrel. Yeah, lots of Gangrel, maybe even Ravnos. Wouldn't say he is... He's too locked to a community. No, then again, some Ravnos are locked to communities... But lots of people saying Gangrel. So I think Gangrel wins in this case. And Gangrel is not a boring option. Uh, because there's a lot you can do with a Gangrel. I, they're one of my favourite clans. Uh, but now people are saying Ventru, Nosferatu. Oh, it's so much. Let's just make him a caitiff and everyone wins. No, uh, he is going to be a Gangrel on this occasion. Uh, lots of people are saying it. So we are going to find Gangrel from the drop down. City Gangrel, Country Gangrel. No, just a Gangrel, thank you very much. So the idea of a Gangrel embracing him while out in the wilderness on his kayak is a good backstory, says Trevor L. I agree, I really like that idea. It gives him something else to be guilty and secretive about. No, he's not a Cappadocian. <laughs> Clara, I know you're very keen on him being a Ventru. We'll make a Ventru another day. All right, then. So, now we're on to disciplines. Oh, that's not true. I've listened to you a lot. He's a Ventru, Gangrel. Uh, so, disciplines now. So, what are the Gangrel's clan disciplines? We have Animalism, we have Fortitude, we have Protean. So, let's knock them out here. So that we can see. At character creation, we get to spend three dots across disciplines. It doesn't have to be one, one, one. That's what a lot of people do. He can be entirely specialized. We can put three dots in one if we really think that he exemplifies one thing more than the other. We've got uh, someone suggesting an animalism-based Gangrel. Right now, he's not an animal-focused character, but that doesn't mean he can't be when it comes to the expenditure of freebie points. Fortitude does fit really well. And just like Gangrel, Fortitude isn't a dull discipline this is clearly I, th I think the fact that he's a traditionalist I think the fact that he is rather stoic whether he's trying to keep everything together but he's frightened fortitude is a really good fit for that but animalism is a favorite of mine because so few people use it and it's one of the most interesting utility disciplines in the game so a penitent with lots of fortitude makes sense. However, I'm going to defer to Clara in this case, because apparently I never listened to her. Lady Gamer. We've got Animalism, Fortitude, and Protean. How should we separate his three dots between these disciplines? I'm relying on you, and I will do exactly what you say in this case. Lots of people uh, saying uh, Protean kind of plays into the whole second hidden side of things and utility for his stealing. That's true. 
protein is a very useful discipline. It's a very popular discipline for some of our, um, well, some new players of Gangrel because, of course, you get the claws, you get all the, the wolf form, the gaseous form, and so on. But if Clara's watching this, and obviously if she isn't watching at this point, then she doesn't get to uh, say. So, I mean, I'm going to count it down uh, by 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And nothing from Clara. So Clara must have gone off to make herself some lunch. Good for her. That means I'm going to have to default to what some of the other players are saying. What some of the other viewers are saying, I should say. And Fortitude and Animalism are the ones that are really appealing to me more than anything else. So I'm going to put two dots in Fortitude, one dot in Animalism. So, uh, that means he is done, but for the freebie points. And, oh, thank you very much, Costas, for sending me $10. Um, but I will say that if you particularly want to send me a tip, any money, go on MatthewDawkins.com and use the buy me a cup of tea icon on there. I don't know where the money goes when people tip me on YouTube. I literally have no idea how to get it. So people send me the money, and that's very generous of them, but I don't know where it ends up. And so <laughs> I don't think it gets to me. That's the problem. So, yeah, if you want to tip me, if you're grateful for videos like this, if you find them helpful, go on MatthewDawkins.com. There's a buy me a cup of tea. Send me as much or as little as you like, and that works or back me on patreon request videos like this or play games with me you know whatever you like i currently run four or five games for patreons right now including vampire the masquerade or dark ages vampire right now in fact all right so we have our freebie points and we have 15 freebie points uh, let's see whether we can remember the cost of various things. Disciplines cost seven dots or seven freebie points per dot. Attributes cost five freebie points per dot. S abilities are two. Yeah, there you go. Two freebie points per dot and backgrounds are one. Uh, we can leave virtues the same, I think. Willpower is one per dot. Humanity is one per dot. I don't want to change his humanity at this point. So... Let's see. All right then. So let's see. Some stealth, says Luna de Luna. Uh, I'm very tempted by stealth as well. And raise that stamina to, five, to four. Yes, that's something I promised early on. So that's our first thing. Spend five freebie points to bring stamina up to, to four. Uh, willpower does need to go up as well. You are right, Vanslow. Two is hell to play because people will just be manipulating him all over the place. I'm going to put another two in it. Uh, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, so that is currently seven freebie points spent. Uh, now, Animal Ken, I'm going to be putting that up because he uh, is focusing on animalism and I don't believe in picking a discipline that you can't use effectively because that's no fun. So that is now nine points spent. We're going to put that's 11 points spent by putting one in stealth as well. So uh, we have got four freebie points left. That means we can no longer afford any attributes. We can no longer afford any disciplines. We could put them in backgrounds. Uh, and we can also put them in skills. I'm thinking I'm quite happy with his skills as they are. He doesn't need melee or firearms. We haven't established at any point that he is going around hitting people or shooting at people. Could give him some merits, says Law by Night, but we'll do that after we give him some flaws, shall we? And no, he is not an ore-wielding master. He is not someone from some kind of Wuja, uh based in Poland, <laughs> who who's, knocks out bandits with the ore of his raft. So, could do a second point of stealth, you're right. And no, he's not doing pottery. That's, that's frivolous, Kay. That is frivolous. We already know what his hobby is. He's a kayaker apparently and that's why he has three dots in athletics yes he's he whittles he whittles for fun that will come up and play a great deal i'm not listening to people anymore uh that's not true uh i you know what 
Luna de Luna just suggested alertness, and alertness is a skill and an ability that is used so often. I kind of do feel obliged to put something in there. So that's another two down. He can spend two more on his backgrounds. So let's see. I'm not putting any in generation because I think generation is the worst background and you can hold me to that. And I find players who put five dots or even close to five dots in generation are kind of missing the point of Vampire the Masquerade. There's my elite throne again. Uh, because generation basically buys you nothing when you're a neonate. So it allows you to spend more blood points per turn, but you very rarely have to. It allows you to access level 6 disciplines if you're really high up, and um, no one ever does. So it, all it does is make you feel more powerful, or make your character feel more powerful. I guess it could be one or the other. So I'm not putting anything in generation. So instead... I'm thinking... I don't think he, he should have any vampire status. He sounds very much like a fledgling at this point. Retainers could work. Hmm. Right now his ally... I put his ally as his brother who works in the prison service. His contact as his wife who works in the library. I'm going to change the contact who worked in the... Who was his wife as a contact in the sporting community, so that he can have his wife as a retainer. That's a bit dark, isn't it? So now he has one dot left to spend. Uh, so, yeah. Well, you're right, Lord by Night. He feeds from his family. They could be retainers. That would make him more of a herd, I suppose. He could be quite background light, but widely spread. Hmm... Well, he's got one dot left, so I either put it in a background or I put his willpower up to five. Alertness is for spotting things. You usually pair it with perception and listening to things. Awareness is for interacting with the supernatural uh, on a similar level. And yes, Trevor L., they are kind of redundant mutually. Uh, this is why V5 has a smaller list of abilities and story path systems like they came from beneath the sea users have even fewer. So I am going to put one dot either in willpower. Yeah, willpower is useful. Domain, he does have a house, you're right. Okay. No, he doesn't have enough. Uh, yeah, we'll put will to five. It's nice and easy. So now we get on to merits and flaws. And we will shortly have finished our character. So, there's no drop-down for merits and flaws here, so here we go. Are there any merits and flaws people would love to see him have? And I'm not going to open this uh, field to questioning for too long, but thinking of merits and flaws, and I've got V20 with me right here. Uh, one of the few books from my shelves that I've not sold off yet, mostly due to the cost of posting a book this size. Um... Yeah, if you can't see behind me, uh, most of the books... Well, I've only got one Vampire the Masquerade book pre-V20 left now, I think. Well, no, I've only got one green-spined vampire book left. Uh, I've sold pretty much all of my role-playing games of old, a lot of them. I know it seems a silly thing to say, given how many of them are behind me, but you will be amazed at how much I've managed to get rid of. Deceptive Aura. Let's see if we can... Get the... That's a one-point merit. Your aura is unnaturally bright and colourful for a vampire. You register as a mortal on all attempts to read your aura. That's actually a really good choice, Vanslow. I think that is a an excellent merit, given we know he is a bit of a liar. So that is a one-dot merit. So, what else? We need a floor to balance this out. Enchanting voice helps with the lying. It's not what you'd imagine from a garbage collector, but that's why appearances can be deceptive. So, let's find our enchanting voice. Hmm... It's not popping up in my copy of V20, so it must be in a different book. 
unless it is a supernatural merit. I'm not seeing it. Thirst for innocence. Early riser. Friendly face. Everyone's giving him lots. I think friendly face. Friendly face really works. And from what I recall, it's again not in V20, but I think that's just a one dot. So I'm going to go for friendly face. Now, I'm not too keen on loading him up with merits before we buy off some flaws. So, I'm going to go for one or two floors. Can't remember the merits and flaws from V20, but there is a floor about needing to be invited into places before you can enter, says Professor Lardy. That really works with his traditionalist and his penitent, the fact that he feels guilty for what he is. And let's see whether I can find what that one is called. I remember it, of course. It is a traditional vampire issue. Uh, so we have, let's see, it's essentially like the can't cross running water floor, but that, but not quite as severe as that. Yeah, I don't want to go for the dark secret floor because it is too obvious in this case. And he's not a Diablerist, no. Uh, territorial. Territorial floor. That is actually a really good choice as well. Territorial, two-point floor. Extremely territorial over his family. There we go. Territorial. There we go. Boom. Done. I don't need to buy merits and flaws like guilt, rack, dark, secret, and so on. Given And bye-bye, Jane. Thank you very much for sticking around and everyone else. And uh, sorry, AP Frenchie, I missed Enchanting Voice. But nevertheless, nevertheless, we now have a character. Yeah, as I said, I don't need to go guilt racked, I don't need to go dark secret, and the reason is because it's already built into his nature and demeanour. Uh, I use merits and flaws to add something to give me fuel to roleplay with, essentially. If I've already got an idea uh, for what I want to do with this character because it's in their nature or their, or their demeanour or whatever, I won't add a flaw to kind of give me points for it. Um, but again... Different people roleplay in different ways, different people build their characters in different ways. It makes perfect sense as well to buy a merit that ties into another concept that you've got, or a flaw that ties into it, so that you can mechanise your weaknesses or your strengths. It makes perfect sense, it's just not the way I tend to do things. So, we have one last thing, and that is the name of his sire. So... I am going to open up to the crowd. This will be the last thing we do on our stream. So... I'm opening the floor so that all of you can throw in sire names, no matter how ludicrous they might be, and I will assign one of them to Lucas. Steve, says Law by Night. Okay, well, Steve is our first name. So do we have anything else? Maybe we do we have an epithet or a surname. We have Steve John Smith. Okay, so right now his sire is called Steve John Smith. Uh, which is an interesting name for a gangrel in Poland. Steve John Smith Dietrich. All right, so we're getting a hell of a lot. Alan Titchmarsh, wonderful. Stephen Fry, the actor. Pavlovsky. Pavlovsky is probably more appropriate, yeah. Uh, Josef, even more so, uh, given where we are. Um, Josef Halemeyer. Von der Muti. 100% a fake name. Yeah, we can put that in. <laughs> Piotr Duda, the fourth. Triton. Uh, Joe Bob. Billy Joe Bob. <laughs> uh, Ursula von Danzig does work. Piotr Stanislav Duda. Uh, Kazimierz uh, Bismarck. Uh, yeah, Otto von Bismarck embraced him. Why not? Mat Mateusz Andrzejewski. Uh, Krizanowski. Let's see how well I can actually uh, pronounce all of the various words that are being thrown towards me right now. Bosengeist, the wrecker of Rocklov. Uh, I've been to Rocklov with the Lady Gamer. In fact, uh, we went there, uh, were um, impressed by the amount of grey 
around Steve Wilk. Okay, so now all these suggestions have been wonderful. They haven't. A lot of them have been dreadful. Uh, so I'm going to go for... Wow, okay. Here we go. Yeah. Otto Bismarck, the famous Polish guy. He loved Poland, I understand. Uh, so here we go. I'm going to copy this one out because I can't actually say the damn thing. There's his name. That's his sire. Uh, he prefers to be known as Gregor. But, or Greg. And this is Lukas's sire. And his surname is Brudjek... Brudjek... Yeah, there you go. That's his surname. Uh, so... <laughs> All right, well, I think we've created a character for V20 now. Lucas is ready to be shipped out, packaged, and sent out to shops where you can buy your Vampire the Masquerade characters. And so uh, the last thing I want to say is, first of all, thank you very much for watching this. Uh, it's great to interact with everyone, and I will do more of these if more people uh, buy... <laughs> by uh, the, my time uh, for me to create characters you know, pop on over to the Patreon uh, which is linked uh, or to MatthewDawkins.com and just send me money without having to bother with Patreon fees uh, or drop me an email and we can talk about it for any game really, uh, I don't mind we can even do made of the role playing game we can create a character for this it's one of my favourite games to create characters for it's uh, awful uh, it's actually, it's not that bad but it's um, a troubling game uh, but this uh, <laughs> this character creation doesn't have to be the only one. If you want to support more, contact me through my website, MatthewDawkins.com. And as long as you're paying for my time, I will spend my time doing something like this. Thank you very, very much for watching. I mentioned at the beginning, but if you haven't backed Mage the Ascension 20th Anniversary Edition Victorian Age, or M20 Victorian Age as it's otherwise known, or Victorian Mage as it's otherwise known, you still can on back a kit, and what's more, if you back for the next month or so, that money will still go towards future stretch goals. We've never done this before with a campaign, but we are doing it with this back a kit, just to see how well it goes. So, Victorian Era, Mage the Ascension, if that appeals to you, check the link in the video description below. Put some money towards it and you might fund even more books that you will get for free as a backer of Mage 20, providing it says that in the terms of the stretch goals. So, and yes, Keegan, you only just caught the end, so fuck you. And thank you very much, everybody, for watching. I am very grateful for you doing so and for the viewers we managed to get on this. It's really nice to see. And all the best to all of you. Thank you very much for watching.